Now, we have saved a biggie for the end. I wish we had a drum roll, actually. Now, this is with Fred Olsen. I cruised with Fred Olsen uh, in November with my mum. Do you know, I had a, an, excellent, an excellent time in terms of value. The ships are beautiful, really well maintained. You know, they are more traditional, more mature chi ships, but they are really well maintained. Yeah, they and are. It's a lovely atmosphere and great food and service, I have to say. Traditional, classic British cruising at its very best. Um, and this is on the, the gorgeous Boudicca, um, which is a ship with a, a bags of history, character and class. It really has that wood panelled, uh, wonderful kind of old country club feel. Uh, a very, very friendly crew. I always say this, when you've got small ships, when you've got um, only a certain number of ships in the fleet, you have a, a big high mix of crew dedicated to certain ships and they know each other and it really becomes a family atmosphere. Um, with Fred Olsen as well, you get a wonderful extra service when it comes to great guest speakers as you go around. Um, and particularly with this, as it's heading out to the Amazon, they're going to have people talking about the Amazon, the history that you're going to see. You're going to have a great chance to, you know, to kind of go and have your afternoon tea and dance in the evening, to relax in the pool and sunbathe, and to get into ports that other ships couldn't do, purely for the size of the ship, because it's only 30,000 tonnes, uh, and just over 800 guests. It's a much more intimate... Yeah. That's yeah, what I loved about it. You know, I was on the uh, the Braemar, which is a similar sort of size. I, I, yeah. you know, and, they're yeah. all they're all they're all kind of smaller ships. Yeah. And they don't build small ships like this anymore, Sean. You know, but it's lovely that this has just come out of a massive re uh, dry docking as well in 2013. Really, and they've added a very load of features to it, so it's, oh. it's beautiful, Nick. Now you get uh, a pre-night stay in the Mian Valley Marriott, which is in Southampton. It's a wonderful hotel. They really look after Planet Cruise customers as well. Mm. The great thing is. You can actually park your car there, because parking, let's be honest, for, th for 36 nights, five weeks, it would cost a lot. You actually get free car parking there as well and transfers to the port. But um, my twin brother is here to tell you a little bit more about the experience at the Marriott. <laughs> Planet Crews have a great partnership with the Marriott Mean Valley Four Star Hotel here in Southampton. Bed, breakfast, free car parking, transfers to and from the port are actually all included. Now I arrived earlier yesterday, I had someone take care of my bags, I went for a swim, I had the most amazing night's sleep and I've just finished off a hearty breakfast. And now with my car safely parked, I'm about to take the chauffeur driven shuttle to Southampton Port which is a mere 12 miles away. And then when my cruise is over, they'll drop me off here and I can drive safely home. It, it, it really is great when you stay there. It's a lovely start to hold you. You're not stressed, you're not panicking. Uh, and it's a beautiful hotel with great staff. And the beds, I have to say, one of the best night's sleep I've ever had. Now, <laughs> you leave your car there, so you don't have to worry about parking for 36 nights. Mm. But we're embarking the Boudicca for 35 nights, aren't we? Go on, thank you. What an itinerary. Really excited about this what one. an itinerary. So, your first couple of days relaxing at sea as you head over to the floating garden of the Atlantic, known, of course, as Madeira. The place there is Funchal, and it is sweeter than wine, this place. It's Oh, scenery is just to die for. This is a bewitching selection of cobbled streets, quaint museums, buzzing cafe and restaurant life, all tied around these gorgeous. Uh, flowers and trees and oh, lilies and orchids and so much. It's like the garden, a mix of Garden of Eden and Edwardian Britain. Imagine those two put together amid vivid uh, Borgen Villa jasmine and exotic blooms. Um, all I can say is here, go and try and see the, the iconic dragon trees. Definitely try and go up to the uh, Botanic Gardens and take the wicker sledge all the way back down. And whatever you do, try the, try the, what the, the classic steak on a stone, which is one of the big uh, things they have in Madeira. The, the dining there, and that's particularly the meat. If you're a red meat fan, it's, it's great. You know. And there's lots of um, alfresco dining, isn't there? Cause it's lots of alfresco dining, yeah. yeah. You can even have your afternoon tea, like Winston Churchill used to have it, up in the Reeds Palace. Ooh, and get amazing views across the coastline. And then over to uh, more sunshine, Tenerife, of course. Yeah, Santa Cruz, Tenerife. This is great. This is uh, snow-capped peaks. Uh, versus some baked beaches. Um, it's got lots of contrasts, really good fun, sunny island. Uh, you can head to Laura Park, which is the award-winning wildlife park. Uh, the residents include parrots, dolphins, sea lions and gorillas. They've all got their own show. You can head out in the boat and see uh, the migrating sea life as it comes through with the dolphins and the whales. 36 different types of whale and dolphin that head through this area. You can explore Santa Cruz, a wonderful city that's kind of... It's not your all-English breakfast kind of Spain. This is real good classic Spain with tapas restaurants galore. Uh, really lovely. Or the Orotova, Orotova Valley. 
and the banana plantations. Head out through there. Really lovely. And then you've got several days at sea. You've really enjoyed this. I know the entertainment with Fred Olsen was, was fantastic, actually. You know, yeah. real good choice of entertainment. Good British style, kind yeah. of West End style shows. Really good fun and great comedians. But something really special is happening now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, basically... Um, on day 14, you'll, you, you, you'll take on your pilot for the Amazon. He will stay with you, you know, for the entire trip. And here we are. Now, I tweeted this earlier. Oh, I put it also on Facebook. Um, some people, you know, were, were lots of different guesses. But this is the Amazon, second longest river in the world. And, of course, uh, a unique ecosystem. Uh, so much to see and do here. So, I mean, you're going to start cruising down this wonderful river. Uh, and that in itself is just a magical experience. What you'll see and what you'll do, this is the kind of thing that, you know, in the old days, just a handful of people... Um, last century would have had a chance oh, to have done this, and I just, just love to do this. Ah, incredible! Um, so you're cruising down, you're cruising down the Amazon itself, uh, and then you're going to come to your first port of call, which is uh, Santalim um, in Brazil. This is fantastic. This is lying 500 miles upriver, and it's near the Amazon's confluence with the Rio Tap Tapas. Which this confluence itself looks really, really credible. This, see, see it there? Look, the meeting of the waters. I can. The different colours there. It's really, it's really, really bizarre. Isn't this, it? this happens several times through the Amazon as well. There's another one with the famous Black River that it's we'll talk so about later. That is bizarre. It's a it? quaint little town uh, full of tranquil, sandy beaches. Um, you can stroll the beach, sunbathe, take a riverboat tour, go into the jungle, uh, go into the rainforest there with the wonderful biodiversity of the Amazon. Uh, many of these treks are led by former Brazilian army experts. Or we'll go through to the Mercado Modelo, which is the main market. And you've got lots of stalls filled with every kind of item imaginable, including stuffed piranha. Mm. What's that like? Stuffed piranha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> okay. uh, then we're going to go um, again. You're going to then head off and uh, cruising, and you're going to head to the next port of call, which is Manaus. This is fantastic. You get an overnight on board here, and this this lies thousands of miles upriver from the mouth of the Amazon. Uh, for one shining moment in the 19th century, this port was the heart of the uh, in the heart of the rainforest. Was the world's wealthiest city, and the, the great Baron Robbins, uh, the great Baron Robbins, the great great Barons. <laughs> Of the rubber trade, You're too excited they literally lit their cigars with hundred dollar bills. It was, it was, it was. This was the kind of wealth. Again, you got another mil me meeting of the waters. Yeah, I can hill see. with the famous Black River heading alongside the Amazon, which is incredible. It's called the Rio Negro, um, and the Yellow Rio Sumeres as they flow side by side. Um, you can head into the what they call the January Ecological Park, giant water lilies, and you can trek into the Amazon rainforest. It's the largest tropical rainforest on earth, one point seven billion acres. Um, you can head to see the, the Roman Catholic nuns of Salisian, and they've got a wonderful little uh, local museum there, which is all about the local Indian culture. I mean, there's so much to see and do. You can trek the, the rubber industry. Uh, uh, Keith, it, this, yeah, it's breathtaking. Do you know what? We're, we're nowhere near even halfway through, are we? We're not, no. Uh, then we're going to go to uh, Palatins in Brazil. This is, is, is a wonderful chance to... Well, what can we say? You can go here. It's got a great flea market with a, a colourful floating market area with dozens of boats jammed together selling fruit and vegetables, fish and souvenirs. There's lots of buildings to see in brightly painted cathedral in Portuguese colonial style. Um, and it's also, though, your chance to go and enjoy it. It's going to be there while you're there. The, 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 what they call it the Bio Bumba. Okay? This is a... Uh, this is Brazil's second biggest festival after the Rio Festival, and it's going to be happening while you're there. And it, and it features two competing teams, the red and the blue, uh, and this is a ball festival. And they strive, to out, they strive to outperform each other with colourful costumes and dance routines and floats with Amazonian flowers. It's incredible, and you'll be there we'll in be the there, heart of the yeah. festival. And then, Macapa next. Yeah, well, Macapa's the pilot station again, so you, you're just literally dropping off, um, dropping the pilot off from there, then you've got some days at sea, and then, this is where you then get oh, no. your, your Caribbean stop. So Barbados, Little England, the hypnotic Calypso Island. It's the ultimate Caribbean dream, 20 mile miles by 14 miles. It's a small island with a big fan base. You can have high tea in Trafalgar Square. You can go and uh, tour the labyrinth of underground caverns in Harrison's Cave. Go snorkeling in search of the hawksbill and green tur turtles that the island's famous for. Or take it easy and have a cocktail on Carlisle Beach. 
stunning. If you want to see the crew relaxing, head to the boatyard. I should say that's naughty of me, but it's great fun. <laughs> and then Keith, we are a bit short of time. We've still got lots to uh, visit. Sorry, I'll get a bit excited. Okay, St George's Grenada. This is the Spice Island. This is your great chance to go and enjoy a ginger, almond, nutmeg, and vanilla. That scent follows you wherever you go. Um, plus, you can see cinnamon, cocoa beans, and every tropical fruit imaginable growing. This is some of the underwater stuff you can see. It's, it's a diver's paradise. You've got the Grand Etang National Park, which is the pride of show with the Grand Etang Lake. Um, and the Annandale Falls and Grand Anse Beach. Oh. And then St Lucia next. Oh, I can't, I can't do I justice to this. St Lucia. Um, this is the, the, the place of Pitongs. Two summits, two summits are over 2,000 foot. And literally, you've got banana plantations at their foot giving way to syrup-coloured beaches and some of the best coral reefs in the Caribbean. Pick up a bargain at Castries Market or go on a treetop adventure park and see the, the rainforest from the sky. Next, we're going to Dominica. This is known as the Island of Waterfalls. This is where Pirates of the Caribbean, a lot of the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff is filmed. It's unspoiled. It's got the last remaining uh, community of Carib Indians here, where the Carib Caribbean comes from the Carib Indians. It's stunning. It's a great chance to go walking in the rainforests, go to the Emerald Pool, um, the biggest river, the River Leu, and, and, and kind of kayak down there. Uh, and of course, the Montrines Piton rainforest with so many exotic flowers, 172 different species of birds. Mm. And, and then St. Martin next. Oh. St. Martin, two flags ruling over this, part French, part Dutch. Go to the French side, enjoy the bistro and boutique. Go to the, 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 the Dutch side where you dock for shopping and bargains. Definitely go to Airport Beach where you can get sucked out of the water by the planes as they, as they come through. Have some guava berry rum. Um, and go to the butterfly farm. And then several days at sea, and we're making our way over to uh, Ponte del Garda, aren't Yeah, we? Ponte del Garda in Portugal uh, does a good impression of Eden. It's the largest of Portugal's as yours. Uh, rolling hills, expansive lakes, and beaches that have resisted tourism. Gorgeous chance. Local specialities include seafood, pineapples, barnacles, and tea pudding made from the locally grown tea on the island. Stunning. The Furnace Fatty Spa. And then uh, several days at sea, three days at sea, and back to Southampton. Now, you know, Keith did a great job there. Tried. Oh. You did, but we need you definitely to give us a call right now for this one. Um, amazing value under £2,200.